If you put enough cliches together, you got a classic. That's what happened with uh, this guy, Stacy Keach, in Mickey Spillane's My Camera. Throw all the stuff in there, and it works. I'll make a note. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> listen, is this guy taking off? Oh, wow, is he taking off? Of course, you, you remember him in The Blue and the Gray and Mickey Spillane's My Camera. Yeah. And now the, he's doing something else. Mistral's he's, Daughter. Yes. Mistral's Daughter. Have you read? Judith Krantz's little book right here. Did you read the whole thing? I mean, it's a fat I, book. I did. F I finally read it, yes. I didn't read it, I'll, I'll confess, until I was asked to do the role. But then I thought it was absolutely essential in terms of research. Well, why would you say yes to something you, you weren't familiar with? <clears throat> well, uh, I didn't say yes until I'd read enough of it to know that there was something I wanted to do. When I found out, number one, that he was a painter, and number two, that he had affairs with three beautiful women. Oh, yeah. I couldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> After the experience you've had, and as Mickey explained, surrounded by all those lovelies. Let me read you something, Stacy. Okay. Now, this is what uh, Mistral is supposed to look like. Now, you look at Stacy and see if he meets any of these qualifications, and I wonder why Judith Kranz wanted you to play the role. You're going to put me on the spot. Okay, now, look at, now what, okay, okay, his eyes. Now, look at his eyes. Blue. His eyes as blue as open water. What My color are your eyes? Hazel. Okay. He is six foot four inches tall. I'm six one. He has a splendid head, <laughs> said arrogantly on a thick, strong neck. That's fairly accurate. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> a broad, open brow. Broad, open brow. What does that mean now? Broad, um, wide across here. Well, broad, open, open. Not like you're intelligent to. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you have that? I guess it's 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 more broad than it is narrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Now turn aside. We have to have a profile because here is okay. a dominant, high-bridged, confident nose. Yes. Well, well this get, is your, get your chin up there. We got to get that up. High-bridged, confident nose. Nose no, is yours. Kind of more Romanesque. Romanesque. Okay. Uh, and a wide mouth. See what this all is saying is that anybody <laughs> can do anything in this business. I mean, you know. You know. <laughs> now wait. There's one last. His hair was dark red. Dark red, curly, <laughs> dark red, curly, and unkempt. Uh-huh, well, that's me, right? Well, you, obviously, <laughs> you were typecast. Judith Crad said, right. I've got to have Stacey <laughs> Keach play the role because he looks like the character. Yeah, but you see, essence is much more important than any of these things. I mean, this is really the essence of the character is what we're talking about. We got to see an hour rough cut. Uh-huh. I liked it. It's really well done. Well, good, and, right? Well, the, the fact that you getting involved with your old girlfriend's Right. daughter made me a little unhappy because she was less than half your age. That's true. Well, that's, that's part of the scandalous nature of this material. How right. would you think a mother would really react when you think about... Violently, as Stephanie Powers does. And, and also my wife, Keith Lee Remick. I mean, that is the story. I mean, that is... Uh, it's a violent reaction to it. And, uh, but it's one of those things that happens. And uh, the passion that is that comes off the screen at that point is, is it's pretty hot stuff. <laughs> you're snoring again. No. Yes, you were. <laughs> Wanna see what I'm doing? <clears throat> Recognize her? Am I imagining it or are you putting just a touch of Rubens in this one? <laughs> I paint you as I see you, my sweet. <laughs> One thing's for sure. Six months of French food has taken me clear out of the scarecrow, Lee. Yes, but are you <laughs> sure it's the food? Huh? What do you mean? Yeah, let me have a look. Oh, Julian, your hands are cold. <laughs> yeah, just as I thought. That's not French food that's filling you out. You're pregnant. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. How would you know anyway? You're not a doctor. <laughs> Teddy, there are things that an artist knows about the human body that a doctor can never learn. I'm telling you, you have a little mistral right there inside. What am I going to do? What do you mean, what are you going to do? You're going to have our baby. Julian, you're a married man. I promise you on my life, by everything I hold sacred, my work, my life, our love, I will do everything in my power to get a divorce. Now, when Kate learns about the baby, I'm sure that her pride will give way to consent. And our love is forever. Baby will be living proof of that. And I want you to know, I have never in my life been happier. That's the story. I mean, I think that's, it's designed that way. 
purposefully in order mm -hmm. to get people to tune in and watch it. You know? I understand when you were going to go over to France to do this that your producers for Mickey Spillane said, now you've got to promise not to pig out because that's all right. that French food that's over there and that's you're going right. to eat all those gravies and that body that they have been working on so right. hard. Yes. Did you pig out? I did. I confess. I, you know, it's no, no, I've worked it off since, yeah. but, but, but um, the other thing was, was uh, uh, I was concerned about, about the look of the character, the, the fact that the character goes through um, about 50 years, about from the time from the 1920s to the present. And we didn't want to use a lot of prosthetics. We didn't want to use a lot of makeup and whatnot. We, we thought it would get in the way. Plus the fact, the ladies, both Stephanie and Lee, and I think very wisely, wanted to be as attractive when they were in their 60s as they were, you know, or as attractive as they could be. So we decided not to use lots of prosthetic pieces and lots of them. I mean, we did, there were wigs, and the hair gets whiter as it goes along, but, but we didn't do a lot as far as, you know, makeup was concerned, prosthetics and pieces like that. We just mm -hmm. tried to do it internally. And it worked a lot better than, I think, mm -hmm. you know, putting on those phony pieces that so often call attention to themselves and you lose sight of what the story's about. Well, it's coming up very soon as a miniseries here on CBS, but of course you get to watch them every Saturday night as uh, Mike Hammer, Mickey Spillane. And that has come a long way. You've grown with that. And you know, we've had some interesting comments from I'm women that have curious. written in. Yeah, what have they said? They're upset about the decolletage of the women, that All every right. woman is, is very busty and we can see a lot of it. Now, the, the, the curious thing about this is the comments come from women, but right. if you, you watch Hee Haw, which we also carry, right. Hee Haw has the same kind of women, the decolletage and the exposure. Nobody complains there. Hmm. Nobody complains about those women, but they complain about the women on your show. And they say it's sexist. Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard this. I've, I've also heard this. Uh, the only thing I can say, it's not really a, being defensive about it, is that I don't feel that Mike Hammer as a character is sexist. I think that he's a, I, he loves women whether they have decolletage or not. And we're trying to emphasize a little bit more of the romantic aspects of his character. It's the genre of the show. It's like James Bond. It's the same. It's, it's a film noir. It's part of the style of what, uh, what the show is, what Mickey Spillane's all about. Is it true you take your suits and when you take them off you just throw them in the corner and let them lie there <laughs> to get that rumpled look? Absolutely. <laughs> Have you stopped smoking yet, Stacy? No, I no. unfortunately. I'm I noticed even as Mistral you were smoking. Yes. Was that a part of the character? Or you just add that little bit. That was part of the character, actually. I mean, okay, I've always, you know, the, actually, I, I took it from, from Picasso. I saw a film of Picasso, it was a marvelous film done with Claude Renoir, where he's actually, you actually see him in the process. The canvas is, act, is on the screen, and you see him painting, and you see him actually go from the beginning through the middle to the end of, of, a, of a painting and a cigarette hanging out of his mouth the entire time. You think you're going to be overexposed now? You're doing a lot of work, a lot I of work. Not. I hope not. I hope not. Well, there's enough of you there that no matter how much we get, we always want more. Well, that's no. nice. Yeah, all right. Look for him, the CBS <laughs> miniseries coming up called Mistral's Daughter. And also, of course, is Mickey Spillane, my camera here on Saturday night. Nice to see you again, nice Stacy. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Please stay tuned. There's plenty more to come as 10-11 Morning continues.